Support for Jalen and Jacoby comes from Blue Apron. Blue Apron delivers farm-fresh, perfectly portioned ingredients and step-by-step recipes so you can make incredible meals at home. Rediscover how fun cooking can be while reducing food waste and supporting sustainable farms and fisheries. Visit blueapron.com slash Jalen to get your first three meals, a $30 value, free with free shipping. And now, Jalen and Jacoby on ESPN Radio. When I'm on the Y'all pop the trunk, I pop the hood. Now act stupid, I'll pop the trunk. Now give me your po-po, po-po. He is Jalen Rose. What up, dog? I am David Jacoby. And on the cool jacket. And we are Jalen and Jacoby on ESPN Radio. We get the people what they want. The people wanted a big game between the Spurs and the Rockets. The people did not get that. The Rockets were absolutely dominated by the Spurs. And my question to you, it's been talked about all day, what happened to James Harden? He wasn't emotionally invested, and you saw how it played out physically. He was standing. He was walking. He was nonchalant. His attitude was so disconnected from the rest of his teammates. You never saw him show any enthusiasm. You never saw him show any passion for a team that was facing elimination, let alone a team that was just playing basketball anywhere. In the backyard, at the park, in the YMCA. This guy didn't take a field goal in the first quarter, only attempted two for the game, had a season-low 10 points, same as the team, season-low as well, had six turnovers in a non-defensive playing turnstile all NBA caliber player has the nerve to foul out? It was odd. It was very odd to watch. And watching that game, I assumed he was injured. I sat there and I said, he must be injured. I remember he tweaked his leg at the end of game five. I was like, he's injured. He's just trying to gut it out. But it didn't seem like that. Oh, maybe he's got a concussion from game five. I was like, you know what? There's something wrong with him. He's just He doesn't want to make excuses. So there he is at the podium saying that he's good. But then he goes out to the club. And then he goes out to the strip club. If you were injured, if you had a concussion, you would not do that. Mike D'Antoni in the post-game conference wanted to couch it a little bit by saying he hadn't feeling his, haven't been feeling his best. Said he had a cold. Said he had a cold. We also know that period of times during the season he was dealing with a, a wrist injury. But again, I want to make sure I acknowledge, as one of the top players in the game, as a professional athlete, I didn't see any emotional investment for a player that wanted to be there. He was disinterested. I have seen players not in uniform, just wearing suits that are more invested, more enthusiastic, that have, frankly, have more out like influence in the outcome of the game than James Harden, who was playing. A lot of times, his play, the way he would drive and kick it out late when he can finish, the way he would be open for three, hesitate, and pass it out of bounds. It was almost like somebody complained to him about being selfish or shooting too much. Mm -hmm. And he was like, here, y'all take it. I don't even care no more. Let me see y'all win without me. Either you get all of me or you get none of me. And what I saw from a team that won the first game by 27 points. Hitting threes from everywhere from everybody. And to go from pillar to post and lose the the knockout game without Tony Parker, without Kawhi Leonard. Oh, Kawhi Leonard didn't play? By 39 on your home court? Not making a single run. Not cutting it down to 15 at one point. Like, not even getting the crowd on their feet for a second in the second half. And so, it made me look deeper into the box score. And I wanted to go behind the curtain. Take us behind the curtain. There was a time in Game 3, the Houston Rockets were winning 29-28. to Did I just tell you a score of a game? Mm -hmm. You know how much basketball I watch? A lot of basketball. So, if I remember when something happened... And I can tell you the score. I can't even tell you the score of the championship games I lost. I barely know my birthday. I know the score. It was one to one in the series. It was game three. James Harden falls on the floor. Mm -hmm. Nene and Eric Gordon go to pick him up. He refuses to help multiple times. It wasn't once, oh, I just need a second. Let me gather my thoughts, gather my body together. Let me just sit here for a second, and then I'll get up with your help. He refused their help. There's not a person that's walking the face of this earth unless this is your sworn enemy 
that would not allow a stranger to help them up. It's odd. Let alone one of your teammates, your brothers, your comrades. And here's the other thing. In front of everybody, you do me like this? What does that tell you? That's the equivalent of me walking up to you at ESPN, sticking out my hand for some dap, and you look at me like you gave me a Steve Harvey letter and walk right by me. You're not going to shake your hand right. That's what that is. (laughs) And so when I saw that play, I saw other things transpire. Unfortunately, Nene got injured. Tony Parker got injured. And the Spurs started to get better. See, Mike D'Antoni has a place in this too. I'm not going to put this game on him, actually. Because when I see your when I see your best player check out the way he did, like I had never seen a guy that has averaged 25 points in the regular season only score 10 in an elimination game, that has never happened. And he didn't put Harden back in quickly in the second quarter either. Harden sat for a long time in the second quarter. It's almost like D'Antoni had a feeling it was going to be this kind of day for James. This guy has led the league in total points a couple of times. He was second in the league this season in scoring. And he shot twice in the first half. Do you think it's hard for him to get a shot up? I understand bad shooting nights happen. I understand bad games happen. But this seemed like something else. This seemed emotional. It was odd. My question for you is, does this quote-unquote happen to everybody? Is it just one of those nights? It does not happen to everybody. It has not happened to everybody. I don't think you will see this happen to someone like this again. I can think of like the LeBron and Boston games and like the Le- LeBron when he was losing the last. Like there was a couple at the end of the game where you look at the scoreboard, it doesn't it just feels like, oh, this is over. But I have not seen this from the jump ball to the final buzzer. Hit the before. brakes. We have never seen a player of his performance during a regular season go through any playoff game, especially an elimination game and be so nonchalant. That's the word. LeBron James has never been like that. I don't care what opponent, what round, or what emotional state he was in. I have not seen this. You probably won't see this again. And lastly, you know we joke a lot about champagne and the campaign, right? That's what I was going to get to. Let me tell you something. Pay attention to the optics. I'm all for anybody enjoying their lives. Enjoy yourself. We talk all of the time about people don't celebrate enough. If I lost a game, do you think I wouldn't? If I lost a game to end the season, I'm going to have an adult beverage afterwards. Correct. And here's what I mean. If you're Chris Paul and you were the best performer in that series and your team wasn't good enough and you lost, I understand. But when I watch you walk around and your team get beat by 30 and you have a lackluster effort like I had never seen, you need to be going home and putting the covers over your head. Like, I, you got all summer to do that. Don't only hit the club, but then hit the strip club on me with your hood on. Like, those optics ain't good. Forget if it's legal or illegal. Forget it's the end of the season. You're the leader of a, you're a, leader of a franchise, and you set the tone for what's going to happen. This is why when you talk about the Yankees retiring Derek Jeter's number, you talk about not only his five championship rings, you talk about a level of character. And take it as somebody that didn't have this level of talent of a Cam Newton or Odell Beckham. To me, sometimes if and when we see them away from the field and we can question how much we think they're focused or invested, we're not saying that they can't be an MVP. We can't, we're not saying they can't be all pros, can't make all of the cash in the world. But being around the game as long as I have, the guys that kind of make those sacrifices, they actually be the all-time greats. Blue Moon is brewed with Valencia orange peel and a touch of coriander. It's a creative twist on a Belgian-style wheat ale for a taste that shines brighter. Taste responsibly. Blue Moon Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. James Harden's performance game six matters not now because we now have the Western Conference Finals set 2017. It is the Spurs and the Go Spurs! Go!
Popovich proved that he still got some guile in that series against the Rockets, pulling some strings, changing the way they play the pick and roll, changing lineups. What do you think he will do to try to slow this Warriors offense? Pop was masterful in the previous series. He's He was pulling strings like no one I have seen, and he's already an all-time great. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you a couple of things that stand out to me. How they suffocated the three-point line against the against a squad that refuses to diversify their offensive portfolio. When you watch the Houston Rockets play, what are they going to do? Threes and layups and foul shots. So what am I going to do if I'm a good defensive team? I'm going to have taller bodies at the rim. Paul Gasol, mm-hmm. Marcus Aldridge, Paul Gasol Deadman, in the starting lineup. And I'm going to have all of my guys toes at the three line, hands up without foul. No foul. The difference, however, against the Golden State Warriors than the Houston Rockets, and this is where we get enamored with offense so much, they're arguably better on defense than they are on offense. Mm. It just so happened that they have the Splash Brothers, Steph Curry and Klay Thompson, Kevin Durant and Draymond Green, who's going to be first or second in Defensive Player of the Year. So, if you get Kawhi Leonard back, now... Simmons is confident. Murray is confident. Patty Mills has been a productive player. So is Danny Green. LaMarcus goes up and down. He shows up or he doesn't. LaMarcus is going to show up if you feed him early and feed him often. Mm -hmm. He's not as effective as the secondary scorer because in his head he needs to get off to a good start and be able to feel like he can go for a volume number regardless of if he's making a miss. But the difference offensively with the Warriors is they'll throw the ball to KD on the elbow, on the post. Yep. They'll dribble handoff with Clay, with Draymond. They'll do a pick and roll, throw it back to Draymond in the middle of the floor at the free throw line, or Iguodala, or Livingston. Mm-hmm. And they driving the kick, throwing the lob over the top, or then kicking it out for the three. You didn't see the Rockets doing that. And if you sag, they're not afraid of a, of a 15-foot jump shot. And this is why I think... While a well-played, well-coached, and I feel so terribly bad for Steve Kerr that he can't participate in this. Mm -hmm. Won championships with the Spurs. I know about his kinship with Pop. Not being able to be on the sideline, you know, I feel bad for him. But the Warriors have too much speed, too many people that can dribble, pass, and shoot. More importantly, too many people that, you remember when we were talking about Boston and I was like, have another guy that can get, 25. The Warriors have three guys that could get 40. Say that again, please. The Warriors have three guys that could get 40. They have four guys that can make five or six threes in one game. And they also have a guy that's one of the most unique bigs in the league to the point where he was leading the league in three-point percentage and blocks. And he's 6'7". He could be the defensive player of the year, and he could also get you a triple-double on any given night. And so, while I look forward to this battle, because me and you fast-forward a lot of conversations, and we said, whoever plays against the Cavs in the Eastern Conference playoffs will... Throw a parade. Celebrate their season. Of course. In the Western Conference, we said, whoever plays against the Warriors does not name the San Antonio Spurs will do the same thing. Mm. But this is the Spurs... And this is the Warriors. It's going to be a great matchup. I do, however, think the Golden State Warriors win in six. Who does Kawhi Leonard cover? This is one of those things that I'm going to put this out there. And Jonathan Simmons comes to mind in this equation. Mm. Because they're going to have to play a lot of guys that can switch late in the shot clocks, run out in transition, be able to deal with the Warriors' onslaught offensively. So he's going to get a lot more minutes. I make sure I put Kawhi Leonard not on Steph, not on Clay, not on KD. Zaza. I put him on Draymond Green. Why? Because that is the guy... That's their anchor. Without him, there's no death lineup. And so when he's not in the game, 
Now you go from having five guys around the three line that can actually dribble, pass, and shoot to Zaza on the baseline. Probably can make a 15-footer. Mm-hmm. To David West, who can make a 15-footer but won't catch a lob at this point of his career. Or JaVale McGee, who can catch a lob but can't play make out on the floor. That's a big piece to change the dynamic of how they play. And you know what else? Draymond Green, flamboyant out on the floor. Mm -hmm. Plays with a lot of emotion. And you know the type of people, because I was a trash talker that I hated to play against? Guys like Kawhi that don't say anything. It would be frustrating if you have the personality that Draymond does and you're being taken out of the game by a guy who you keep chirping at that refuses to speak like a robot. And you know what else happens? You now really hamper what they like to do in pick and roll. Mm-hmm. They gonna they they're still gonna run a lot of pick and rolls with KD, but it's different when it's one two three. It's different when it's one through four, because now that's now that's Murray, Green, Anderson, Simmons, Kawhi. All like like sized people that you can use to switch and hope they don't get beat in one or two dribbles on the drive by. If you put them on Draymond, they can't even really run those because you're literally gonna just switch it, and all of a sudden you got Kawhi on Steph late in the clock. You'll take that, sure. And so I'm trying to I'm trying to take what I think is their most important interior cog. Out of the game. I would put Kawhi Leonard on Draymond Green. We'll see if Coach Popovich does the same. Tell me, tells me at some point during this series, he will. Blue Moon is brewed with Valencia orange peel and a touch of coriander. It's a creative twist on a Belgian-style wheat ale for a taste that shines brighter. Taste responsibly. Blue Moon Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. I love this story. In Elkhorn, Nebraska, there's a family, just like my family, young children. I think they've got a one-year-old and a three-year-old. And for months and months, every once in a while, a erotic dancer, a female erotic dancer, would just arrive on the doorstep and just knock on the door and wanting to be paid. And the same thing would happen with escorts. It just would happen every once in a while. And they couldn't really figure it out until this March, when over the course of that month, it happened eight times in a row to the same family. Eight times in a row. What? They called law enforcement. Law enforcement figured out that the neighbor across the street was watching through the window and ordering these ladies to go to their neighbor's house. What? <laughs> My question for you is this. How mad did that family's mom get at the husband when they kept showing up at the door. I know. She, I mean, he must have been like, I have no idea what's happening. Look at like, the trying people to tell like, me. Yeah, she's like, you're trying to tell me that these ladies just keep showing up, saying that they've been ordered to come to this residence, and you have nothing to do with it? It wasn't me. He's just like, it was, do you know how vindicated he felt when they figured out it was the neighbor? I'm so happy for this husband, because I, if I put myself in his shoes, I don't know what to do. At some point, I would just have to change my name and just move, and because also, I could not explain it And anymore. also for that neighbor who continued to set this up, out of spite. He got real thirsty in March. What, you don't like my kids playing in the yard? <laughs> yeah, for real. Like, like I have toys one, on the grass? A one-year-old and a three-year-old? Like, what's wrong? And there was times they would show up and, like, disrobe on the front porch. It was just really weird. I'm just so happy for this husband. I'm happy for this husband because I know he had to explain to himself over and over and over again. Be like, look, I know. I, I know yep, I know. It, ha- it happened again. I understand. I had nothing to do with this and whatsoever. you know what we just did? We perpetuated that activity because there's one person listening to this program like, they just rolled? How much does that cost? <laughs> yeah, dude, what time front, of day was it? On the it? front porch? Like, what, huh? Why did they do that? I need to get to Nebraska. Oh, I'm so happy for that vindicated husband in Nebraska. Tom Brady's on the cover of Madden. I believe in the Madden curse. He did this whole video where he said he's not he's not worried about the Madden curse. Do you know who's worried about the Madden curse? The Me. other nine people. Me. Who were affected by yeah. it. I'm I if you were Tom Brady, what would be the number? Because I feel like they, they call and they're like, all right, you know, whatever, million dollars to be on the cover of Madden. He's like, mm, I don't know, there's the curse. And he's like, no, thank you. Then they call back. You know what I mean? At what point, like, what's the number for Tom Brady? I'll say a million. A million? We'll see. You can put my face on a video game that I don't play for a million. I'm going to just 
just go out on a limb and say that you are not part of the stand-up paddleboarding craze. I am not. Sweeping the nation. You're familiar with it, though. It's like a surfboard. You stand on top of it. You've got an oar, and you paddle around. You don't even know what I'm talking about, right? I know what you're talking about, but not going to be able to do it. Okay. Well, it's very popular. It's very popular here in California. And there were some people that were paddleboarding in Orange County. And then from a helicopter, they heard this announcement. Attention in the water. Attention in the water. This is the Orange County Sheriff's Department. Be advised, State Parks is asking us to make an announcement to let you know you are paddleboarding next to approximately 15 great white sharks. Uh, they're advising that you exit the water in a calm manner. Uh, the sharks are as close as the surf line. Thank you for your cooperation. How could you exit the water in a calm manner? How can you exit the water in a calm manner? But, um, yep, there's 15, not, not one great white shark. There's 15 great white sharks right next to you. Please exit in a calm manner. I appreciate the news the way it was delivered. Nice and calm. It was. Yes, it was. I'd be freaking out even if I was in the helicopter. Even if I was in the helicopter. I'd be like, go now. Swim as fast as you can towards the beach. Maybe one of you makes it. Maybe, basically, it's a race. Whoever, whoever is, whoever <laughs> the fastest swimmer is going to live, slower swimmer, you're going to get eaten by the 15 sharks. And at the beginning of this question, you asked me, would I do something like this? And you looked at me crazy when I said no. Now you see why. 15 great white sharks. Imagine, just imagine this tourist. You know, here's what I'm thinking is they, they did mention later in the video there's a tourist. What if they don't speak English? You know, what if, what if he's Brazilian, he's out there just paddling around and enjoying himself. Oh, I wonder what they're talking about in that helicopter. Like, oh no, <laughs> we're in trouble. <laughs> yes, that, that wasn't me. It wasn't me. <laughs> Don't mention my name. Jay-Z and Live Nation have announced a new deal. It is an exclusive 10-year touring partnership rumored to be worth up to, ready? $200 million. This will run until he is 57 years old. Does this guarantee us new music from Hove? It does, but with this discography, it doesn't have to. As an athlete, I always fancied and appreciated the fact that there's so many other professions that you never retire from. How can you be an accountant or a broadcaster or a golfer at basketball and football? Hockey, there's a shelf life. Even baseball eventually has a shelf life. Says the guy that's never filled out his retirement papers. But as an artist, as long as you can stand on a stage, you can perform Mm -hmm. at whatever venue. The venues get smaller as you get older, but the money stays green. So it makes sense for both sides, especially for somebody like Jay, who got bars. I'm sorry, what do you have? Bars. Wooden Award winner Frank Mason III, formerly of the Kansas Jayhawks, is at the Combine in Chicago. And we always hear the stories, you know, that where they have a psychological evaluation or he meets with teams and you get asked funny questions. He was asked how he would like to die. What? Why do they ask these questions? I'm disappointed what? in that question. I don't deem myself superstitious. And I know we talk just recently about a curse. But I'll say this. I also don't like to get into projecting things that could be fatal. Don't make me go there in my brain. So why are we even talking about something that represents the polar opposite of what I should be here to represent the opportunity to chase my dream versus thinking about my fate? Like, I'm truly disappointed that there were adults planning to ask this young man this question. It's what they like, sat in the room. What type of tree do you want to be? It's like, okay. And then literally uttered this foolishness. But not only that, Jalen, they did this after knowing every single year there's a news story about the silly questions that people ask athletes at the combine. And unfortunately, it gives more validity to what KD recently said about not attending those level of workouts in the combine and how it left it left it left him feeling uncomfortable how he was being teased about his lack of being able to lift 185 pounds 
And when I initially saw that, I was like, oh, I don't know if KD should have said that because he was the number two pick. I know they was going back and forth with Greg Golden and him, but whoever that is, they're going to go back and forth for. If they did it with Ryan Leaf and Peyton Manning, they're going to do it with whoever's one and two. But then when you make comments like this and a handful of players or so choose not to attend that know that they're going to be top ten picks or so, it makes sense for them. I was a player that attended the Combine. I actually should have stayed and worked out instead of going to Gary, Indiana in Glenn Robinson's basement while he was recording music. And we were just chilling, happy that we weren't in Chicago. We in GA. We chilling. <laughs> and he went number one, and I was like Moss at the draft, wearing a red and white suit. So if there's any lesson to be learned from this, it's whenever you get an opportunity to hang out with Glenn Robinson, you should do it. <laughs> As we do on days when we don't have a radio show, when we're done taping the television segment, we do exclusive content for our podcast listeners because we love our podcast listeners, especially our everyday listeners that stay committed to us. We will stay committed to you and keep giving you what you want. If you call 985-80-Jalen, you can leave us a voicemail. If you follow at Jalen and Jacoby, you can send us tweets. Let's listen to the first voicemail. Jalen, Jacoby, what's up? It is your friend Joey from Canton, Ohio. Soft move or boss move? Starting the phrase, I'm a person, on your favorite podcast, Jalen and Jacoby, and then hearing listeners from all over the country run with it when they call in the show. If you were first, boss move. I think he was first. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't remember exactly who that was, but he said, it's your boy, Joey from Canton, Ohio. And I was like, well, if he's my boy, I guess he's my boy. That is definitely a boss move. Thank you for making that part of the vernacular of the show because I always enjoy it when people make ridiculous requests and then say, I'm a person, as if that is going to guarantee that it is delivered. Let's listen to the next voicemail. What up, though? Jalen Jacoby. It's Chris from Monterey Park, California. I just got one question for you. Buying a date flowers on the first date, soft move or boss move? Keep giving the people what they want, y'all. Ooh, I want to know where you're at on this one first. I want to know where you're at on this one first, Jalen. We're going to have to get a cane in here or something when I go old man Jalen. You're going old man Jalen? We'll get a gray beard and a cane. We ain't putting no beard on this. Oh, I'm sorry. Not my, yeah, yeah, my bad, my bad, my bad, yeah. I've never shaved. People, people think I'm lying when I say that. I can't grow a beard. True story. Here's what I want people to understand. The game of dating has changed dramatically. Just like you see electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. I remember the gas guzzlers. Of course. When they were considered the best and the brightest and the most beautiful. Just for the sake of being big. So I've seen this movie happen. The remix, the sequel, time and time and time again. How this has changed over decades. Okay. There was a period of time where both parties truly respected each other if they decided they were going to date. That's still now. There was a level of esteem there consistently. And here's what I meant. It's still happening. A guy was expected to be a gentleman. Mm-hmm. What? A woman was expected to be a lady. Sure. What? And so there were certain things that the guys were required to do then that they're not required to do now. No, things change, Jalen. Old man Jalen, things change. Like, um, meet the parents. She like, I don't want him to meet my parents. I'm no, just going out. not until you're very serious. And he like, I don't want to meet her parents. I don't want to meet anybody's parents until we're pretty far along. Maybe open the door? Yeah, sure. People still do that. Maybe, uh, yep. buy flowers? I'm not buying flowers in the first date. I'm not buying flowers in the first date. It's not like you're buying a diamond ring. It's a, but the, I just don't want her to carry them around all night. Where do you put them while we're at dinner? She doesn't have it's to just, carry them. But, but I carry them around all night then? It just it, I understand the gesture. If there was a way that you could like grab a nice rose from somebody who was selling them on the street at the very end, like maybe. No. But I just don't like the logistics of it. This it sets is the what, bar this too is, high. No, this is then what you do. you show up at the second date with no roses. It's, I don't know. I'm not doing roses. You, the, I'm not doing flowers you, in the first you date. You bring the roses when you pick Pick her up. You give her the roses, the that. and she takes them into the house. So, therefore, at the end of the night, she comes home to the roses. So, here's a question. Do I stand outside on the stoop while she's cutting the stems and putting it in a vase? Or do I come inside that I'm inviting myself in? You just I'm allow her to take him in not, I'm avoiding all this by not buying but, roses. But, but here's the flowers. point. But here's the point. What's the point? If I was the general manager or president of a basketball team, let me tell you something I would do. I love where you're going here. 
I was just talking about this with Chauncey. 60 minutes on the clock, no cell phones. Until the end of the game. I don't want guys texting their brothers and their agents at halftime, having them text them a bad shot that their teammate took. I want them immersed on what we're going to do as a group. I don't think that's a crazy request, Jalen. Here's why, though. I bring this back to the Dayton part because today's society has lost the ability to communicate with one another. You used to have to actually introduce yourself to somebody. You actually used to be like, hmm, he's with his boys or she's with her girls. You have to pay double dutch. Maybe should I go say hi or maybe should I fall back and have a little butterflies in your stomach? Now you're just sliding the DM. 50-50 chance that she hits you back. What's wrong with that? I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with it. I'm just saying you don't have to communicate. You don't have to. You can have the style, but you don't have to create the substance. You can have the microwave, but you don't have the oven. It's just way different. You like microwave popcorn. I like to make mine on the stove. Okay. That's all I'm saying. I guess I would say that it's to, in, in defense of the way it is done now, at some point for a relationship to be somewhat serious, for you to be quote-unquote dating, you do have to take it off of the gram, take it off of the app, take it out of your phone and communicate with someone in real life if you are going to have a substantial relationship. So you do have to back it up. I would say the initial the initial phase of the courtship period has dra- changed drastically, but once you get past date number two, it's all the same. You have dating apps where it's almost like a job profile. Yeah. It's exactly like that. I support all of this. I'm not saying that it's a good or a bad thing. What I'm saying is that it's new and it's different. So I think bringing someone flowers or bringing someone a gift is a sign of being a gentleman. I think that's a boss move. I like the idea. I don't like the logistics. Soft move. Next, we have a text from BJ. Why did Kawhi not get any hate when he did not return in game five and not play in game six? Real simple. I talk Le- about this. LeBron would have would have been hated hated hard. Hit the brakes. This is exactly what I talk about during a season where healthy players rest. I say if they don't finish the previous game, that's when you know a guy's truly hurt. He didn't finish the previous game. He was questionable for the next game. They understood that they possibly had a game seven. More importantly, they knew that they could win without him. We didn't. I didn't. They did. I sure didn't. And now all of a sudden, you sit him in game six, you win, you have him ready for game one. And he tried to play. He tried to finish game five. He went out, he went back in, he went, he went back in the game, and it, finally the coaches were like, he's shooting off one foot, we're going to take him out to save him. Next, we have this voicemail. Hi, what's up, Jalen and Jacoby? It's Stefan from Missouri. I have one quick question. i like to know what you guys think is going to happen in this upcoming draft. You guys think there's some teams going to make some moves? Isaiah Thomas maybe get traded? I don't know. I'm just out here spitting ideas. Uh, go ahead and let me know what you guys think. Bye. Thanks for the call. Appreciate the love. I'll go to notable players. I talked about Chris Paul staying with the Clippers. Paul George. Gordon Hayward. Kyle Lowry are players to watch that could possibly be on the move. I would say them, they will all be in new uniforms. We discussed J.J. Redick, possibly Blake Griffin. It's interesting. I could see a team selling Blake Griffin, be like, you are being misused, Blake. You are a death lineup five. Like, you are not a power forward that's always got a seven-footer blocking the rim. Like, you are a death lineup five. We are the new version of basketball. Come join us in the new era. You're being held back. I could, I could get sold on that if I was Blake. I can get sold easily, though, really quick, especially if there's compliments involved. <laughs> Uh-oh. Optimus Prime has a question, not for Jalen, but for Jalen Rose, the senior statue analyst. <laughs> In the world. I love. His question is, what do you think of the new Atlanta Falcons statue outside the arena? It is awesome. It, I, it is majestic. It is suspended in air. Birds no look so strings good attached. When they the wings outstretched, about to take flight. It looks kind of mean and nice at the same time. It is majestic. I love It looks that ferocious. Statue. 
I love that statue almost as much as I love the statue of the owner of the Carolina Panthers flanked by two mean Panthers. Can't stand that one. I love that one so much. Next question. Oh, no. More statue news. David Norton has this question. Very simple. Will Paul Pierce get a statue? Future Hall of Famer. No. A member of the Boston Celtics, their history and lineage carries so far back with championship glory and so many notable players. It just can't happen playing with that team. You know who doesn't have a statue? Larry. Larry's got one inside. Is you got to put it outside. If your statue's inside, like you didn't really get a statue. They're not putting this falcon inside the building. That falcon is perched right outside of the building. Let's get Larry a statue first, and then we can consider Paul Pierce's and then reject it. Let's listen to another voicemail. Jalen and Jacoby, what up, though? This is RT from Marietta, Georgia. Um, Man, I was just listening to a radio show in Atlanta, and uh, one of the hosts of the show was saying he did not think that Jonathan Simmons would be an X factor in the Spurs Rockets series. I just want to say, Jalen, man, you totally called it. These guys were baffled and they had no idea. Jacoby, I got something for you, soft move or boss move. So I drive a minivan and I've taken all the seats out of the back and I'm starting to like it. I think I want to do some redecorating and maybe try to put a couch in the back seat, legally, of course, adding the seat belts and all that. I just want to know, is it a soft move or a boss move? All right, fellas. Talk to you later. There's a lot to chew on there. First of all, shout to you for calling Jonathan Simmons thing. And shout to whoever you were listening to in Atlanta radio. You know what I mean? Good for them. And also, not a lot of people saw this coming. He wasn't much of a factor in game one, two, three. And also, if you were listening and you got a chance to tell other people, Jonathan Simmons is going to be an X factor. And also, when you do that, claim it is yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel this is a plagiarism encouraged zone. Yes, when you're feel around your plagiarize. friends and family, take information from this podcast, spit flames like it's yours. Don't say, oh, oh, Jalen Rose says that J.J. Redick is going to lead the Clippers. You say, J.J. Redick is going to lead the Clippers and here's why. And this is why we do this how, so you can plagiarize it. How you shout us out is you just turn people on to the podcast, radio show, and TV show. Just That's by what you subscribing, do. listening, going on iTunes and rating us and reviewing us. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Secondly, you know I love my minivan, the town and country, the Chrysler, not the new Pacifica. I'm an old model minivan guy. And they've got the stow and go seating. All of my seats with a snap of the finger, boom, go right into the floor. Go right into the floor <laughs> like roaches when you turn the light on. Go right to the floor and disappear. You can get a bed in there. You can lie down. You can, you can have dinner in there with my whole family <laughs> sitting cross-legged. However, it feels good because I know what he's talking about, just to look in the rearview mirror and to see nothing just clear just space it feels like you've got an apartment in new york city i do encourage you putting a couch in there however don't even bother you don't bother trying to get it built to code and putting seat belts in there that's because it's never gonna happen you know what i mean like you don't you don't want to no inspector's gonna come to your house like you're not gonna go through those those you're not gonna jump through those loopholes trust me and i clearly am not anywhere close to the minivan expert you are But here's my question or comment. How do you enjoy the couches in your vehicle when you're the primary driver? Does that now mean you go into a lot of drive-in movies? Drive-in movies, camping. Making out in the back of the car. Road trips, rest areas. Got it. Things like that. And you don't want the couch to be bolted into the floor. You want to stop at that rest stop to get your homeboy, take the couch out of the back, and just enjoy the view. Enjoy your minivan. Finally, we have this question from Money Making Mitch. Mitch. Shout, shout out to Money Making Mitch. Shout out. Boss move or soft move? Pronouncing what up dough as what up though. Can't ride with the dough just yet. I've struggled with this myself, Mitch. Jalen Rose, as a Detroiter, what's your ruling on what up dough versus what up though? It sounds the same. I think so, too. It's think, almost like when people call my name, some people say Jalen, like yeah. the J-A-I-L. <laughs> yep. I don't correct them. It's the way it is. I would say that what up, though, is the gateway drug that's going to get you to what up, though. It's an evolution. You're just dipping your toe in the though waters. Eventually, you're going to dive right into the dough. 
Trust me, it happened to me. As someone who said that I would not say what up, doe, because it doesn't feel right coming out of my mouth, guess what I do now? I what say, up, what doe? up, doe? And we'll be saying what up, doe, to you on Monday. Thank you so much for listening to the Jalen Jacoby Podcast. As always, our everyday podcast listeners are our people, and we will. Got to